leading a figure and make the landmarks that you see in the mandible near the mandible incisor region when taken in the skull view that is the mandible you can see that from the facial aspect of the mandible you might see this kind of an elevation or a projection that is seen directed uh, that is almost directed towards the midline from the either side so this is this elevation of the projection that you see is your mental ridge and then above this mental ridge now uh, the superior to that of your mental ridge you might see this kind of a depression that is your mental fossa when taking the lingual view you might notice that in the midline of your mandible you will see the projection that is located just slightly above the lower border of the mandible you can see that there is a projection that is your genial tubercles and here you have just within that or tight superior to that of your genial tubercle there is a foramen that is located in the midline itself is your lingual foramen genial tubercles it's called so because you have your attachment of your muscles both the muscles that is the genioclossus and the geniohyoid muscle so they say that the tubercles are found to be right and left and there is also a superior and an, there is an inferior tubercle wherein the superior part of it is where your attachment of your genioclossus is and the inferior part is where your muscle attachment to your geniohyoid is So when taken in the radiograph you might notice that there is a radio opaque mass that is located just almost uh, so 2 centimeters below the periapex or the periapex or the apical portion of your uh, mandibular incisors you will see a radio opaque mass that is seen here in this black bar. You can see here this red arrow is nothing other than bifurcation of a canine which is one another developmental anomaly that you see in the canine as you know that the canine is found to be a single rooted here you can see that there is different root canine that's why it's not written right then you have the lingual foramen when seen in the radiograph seen as a hollow or a round radio lucent outline wherein you see it has been surrounded by a radio opaque outline over here okay so in this lingual foramen you have your lingual vessels in the surgeon sublingual submental arteries are all being uh, passed across this lingual foramen then you have a mental ridge that has been seen in the label aspect as I've already mentioned when, the, when taken in this color view, when taken in your radiograph, you might see this as a V-shaped radio opaque line, which is found to be moving forwards. Okay, it's moving forward and upwards. You can see this as a V-shaped radio opaque outline, which is found to be meeting the person, the pointed part of the V is being located towards the midline. So you can see this passing across the periapices of your mandibular incisors and then you have your mental fossa which is located near the apical portion of your mandibular incisors wherein there is a radiolucent structure and sometimes you can see a fine trabeculations that are seen here you can see this sparsely placed trabeculae is located within the radiolucent mass over here. Then next you have the nutrient canals which are found to be located as a radiolucent structures which are found to be vertically placed from the basin apical portion or the, from the root apex of your incisors. You can see here the radiolucent vertically extending downwards is your nutrient canals. Nutrient canals is nothing other than the, it helps to supply that is your blood supply and the nerve innervations are all uh, passed through these nutrient canals. To summarize now 
in diagrammatic representation the mandibular incisors the structures that you see here this is your mental fossa that is thought to be a radiolucent area that is seen within the middle third and the apical third of your uh, roots in the mandibular incisor then below to the uh, periapex below to the apical part of your mandibular incisors you have a radiolucent structure wherein a radiolucent structure which is surrounded by a radiopaque outline is your lingual foramen then within that you have your radiopaque mass that is seen here is your genial tubercles then a v-shaped radiopaque outline which is formed by the mental ridge moving on to the mandibular premolar region the premolar region especially a radiolucent structure is seen in the apex of your premolar second premolar sometimes it is located at both the as in between the first and second premolars or sometimes it is located below the second premolar root apex it's radiolucent hollow structure this is nothing other than a mental foramen this is the termination of your inferior alveolar nerve which extends uh, from the mandibular canal it terminates to this mental foramen this is the skull view that has been seen the labial aspect you see this kind of a structure one foramen that is your mental foramen when taking the skull view itself you can see that how it's been demarcating the termination of your mandibular canal towards the mental foramen so you can see here an outline that is a radiolucent structure with the radiopaque lines that is seen here the superior border and the inferior border of your mandibular canal it's been terminated towards the mental foramen it's blue material so the mand mandibular premolars you see the mental foramen which is located between the roots of your in the apices of the roots of your two premolars moving on to the mandibular molar region the mandibular molar region when you take a skull view see that the labial aspect already have mentioned here you have the mental foramen this is the termination of your mandibular canal this b structure the b that has been marked over here demarcated here is your mandibular canal in the lingual view you might see a projection or an elevation that is seen right below the alveolar ridge is your mylohyoid ridge that or the internal oblique ridge mylohyoid ridge the name as it says it's called also because of the mylohyoid muscle attachment towards this ridge then inferior to this mylohyoid ridge is your there's a depression which wherein your submandibular gland has been located so the submandibular gland location for your this area this is called as a submandibular gland fossa when taken in facial view you'll see that there is this kind of a extension from your anterior border of the ramus where it extends to form a projection this is a ridge called as the external oblique ridge then inferior to this external oblique ridge is your mandibular canal already previously mentioned in the previous slide here in the lingual view you see this kind of uh, elevation or a projection that you see slightly below the alveolar ridge is your mylohyoid ridge then below to this below or you could say inferior to this mylohyoid ridge you have this depression which is called as a submandibular gland fossa moving on to the radiograph that you see the mandibular canal you can see it as a radiolucent structure wherein which is surrounded by a radiopaque lines this is the black arrow marks is the superior border of the mandibular canal this is the inferior border of the mandibular canal which is a radiopaque outline that you see that's why we are calling it as a borders whereas the mandibular canal is found to be a radiolucent structure itself wherein your inferior alveolar nerve canals 
uh, sorry, in inferior alveolar nerve, well, nerve as well as your inferior alveolar vessels have been innervated over here in this canal. This mandibular canal, the radiolucent structure, passes across your apical portion of the roots of your mandibular molars as well as the premolars. So, what is its clinical significance? Is that we can uh, uh, different uh, demarcate or locate the mandibular canal with respect to that of your mandibular third molar. Sometimes you might see that these roots or the ap root apices might be superimposed. Superimposed meaning it might be person overlapping that of your mandibular canal. So you want to demarcate this mandibular canal with that of your root apex of the mandibular third molars. Next is your mylohydridge. We have this is bound to be a radio opaque line that is seen person across the peri apex of your mandibular molars and roots mandibular molar roots so you can see that it's found to be extending towards the the lies and radio pink line is found to be extending towards the apices sometimes it might be is found to be located just above or superior to that of your mandibular canal yes well demarcated over here. This is seen because of an increased vertical angulation that is being given. For this case, as a more negative angulation is being given. So that is why you can clearly see a radius and uh, more radio opacity or more radio opaque line that is being observed here. This internal obliterage of the mylohyde ridge. Below to this mylohyde ridge. You have a um, this homogeneous radiolucent area that is seen here. Sometimes you can see a sparse kind of trabeculations also seen within it. So this is called as the submandibular gland fossa. This is where the submandibular gland has been located. So that is why this is called as submandibular gland fossa. You can see that the white arrows that are pointing out is your submandibular gland. So, next is the external oblique ridge. The external oblique ridge you can see here it's found to be an extension of your anterior border of the ramus of the mandible, wherein it extends towards the alveolar ridge or the alveolar crust depth. So, this part is found to be terminating towards the alveolar ridge which terminates till it ends off till your mand mandibular molar region of the alveolar uh, alveolar region reg reg of your mandibular molars so you can see that the black arrows that are marked here is your external oblique ridge and the red arrows that are marked here the radio opaque line that is seen here is your mylohyde ridge or the internal oblique ridge so you can see here Oh, well, this has been demarcated. The radio pain outline that is seen here, almost at the level of the alveolar ridge, is your external oblique ridge, and then the just below that or the inferior to that is your mylohyde ridge. Then it runs parallel. It runs parallel to that of your external oblique ridge, and this mylohyde ridge is found to be located near the peri apex or the root apex of the. Um, the root apices of your mandibular molars. Now to summarize the mandibular posterior region, the structures that you see here, there is a radio opaque line that is seen here. This is the external oblique ridge. Inferior to that, you see the mylohyde ridge. It is again a radio opaque line that is seen near the passing across the apices of the roots of your mandibular molars. Then below to that, or inferior to that, you see this kind of a homogeneous radio lucent mass with some sparse with tuberculations that are seen is your submandibular gland fossa. And then below to that, you can see this kind of a canal like a structure that is seen here. This is a radio lucent structure. This is your mandibular canal. 
So again, in the diagrammatic representation, we can demarcate here the A that has been pointed out. This your external oblique ridge. Below that is your internal oblique ridge or your mylohyoid ridge. All up to that is your uh, mandibular canal, and then the radiolucent mass-like structure that you see is your submandibular gland fossa. To summarize, we had spoken about the radiographic and anatomical landmarks seen in the mandible. We spoke in respect to each region, providing the incisors to be your mental ridge, your mental fossa, then the genial tubercles, and then your lingual foramen. Then followed by, we went to the mandibular premolar region, wherein you see your mental foramen, and then followed by the mandibular posterior regions, the molar regions, wherein you see your mandibular canal, then your submandibular gland fossa, then the two ridges, that is the external oblique ridge, and the internal oblique ridge, or the mylohyoid ridge. Sometimes there is certain restorations when, uh, that are, are placed in the tooth, you might see it as a radiopic structure. You can see here it's a well defined radiopacity that is seen on the coronal aspect. You can see this and you can detect the which restoration this is. So almost like this is a silver amalgam restoration that you see here. How the radio density is more or radio opacity is more when compared to that of your enamel because of the silver content in it or the metal content that is seen. So here again there is a metal fuse or the crown. That is seen here, you can see that it's found to be more radio opaque. Once you see if it is a porcelain crown, it's found to be lesser density, that is lesser radio opacity is seen, it might be more radio lucent. So, this is a metal crown, and then you can see that within the can pulp canal space, you can see that it's been filled with radio opacity. A well defined radio opacity that is seen within the pulp canal space this is nothing other than your gutta percha point and then here you can see that how the density is comparatively less when compared to this this is nothing other than your you can see certain serrations also in between this this is nothing other than an endodontic file that has already been perforated through here so you can see how the difference in the density here uh, you can see here the radio opacity here is comparatively more than that here so i hope you've understood what the radiographic and anatomical landmarks is all about and definitely you should know how to locate each of these landmarks and then based on these landmarks if you find any differences in that then you can consider about pathological condition that might be affecting across this landmarks. So I hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you. See you next time.